Hello there again. Um, so, this video is going to be another book haul. Yes, I don't know why it is, but for some reason, even though I'm trying to reduce and not buy so many books, I still somehow uh, try to find a way, an excuse rather, to uh, fit more into my already extensive collection. And that excuse is because it was my birthday. Yes, uh, my birthday has passed on the 15th of February uh, this year. I've turned 21. Uh, that's a very big milestone for me. Um, although, to be honest with you, I do not drink or gamble. Uh, I'm not interested in doing any of that. Though, to be fair, I do feel taller you know, for some reason, all these years, uh, I've been six foot one or two, one of those. And uh, I've always felt very short for my height. But now, for some reason, not sure why, I feel taller. But anyway, this here is a birthday book haul. Um, also, maybe a little bit of a Christmas one, too. I thought I may as well uh, mention those uh, because, you know, I haven't. And I really don't tend to go all out for holidays on this channel. Not too much. I haven't really posted many Christmas-related videos or anything like that. Maybe a couple my first year on here. But other than that, it's been... It's been pretty standard fare from me. But anyhow, um, so I'll, I suppose I'll go ahead and show you the these first two Christmas books. And then I'll get to the birthday haul. All right, so first here, um, we have Watch Repair for Beginners, an illustrated how-to guide for the beginner watch repairer by Harold C. Kelly. Um, my uncle and aunt have, have gotten me uh, this book here. And uh, I haven't thumbed through it yet, but, uh, you know, it's, bas it's your basic how-to guide. Um, as to how the workings of watches go. This is for mainly analog watches. Um, I believe this is primarily for, for pocket watches, though I'm not too sure. I haven't uh, really dug too deep into this. I'm, it might... Uh, well, right there. It says uh, basics for watch and clock repairing. It can, you know, it can repair an automatic watch, a stopwatch, and a chronograph. So those are all the things there. Um, and then another uh, watch repair book, the Watch Repairer's Manual, the second edition of by Henry B. Freed. This one actually has some very nice illustrations in there. You can see that there. And uh, that one there. And this, I believe, is primarily for pocket watches too. So I might have to thumb through those because I do have one watch, uh, and you probably know which one it is, the New Haven, that is a bit faulty. Yes, uh, the spring, not spring, hairspring, that's what it is, is a bit off, and it starts and stops and runs down uh, far too quickly. So I might need to consult these sometime soon. Those are the two Christmas books. Now we get to the birthday haul. So, um, firstly, my brother um, got me this book here. And I've been wanting this book for quite some time, uh, especially now since I've been on this big science fiction uh, kick with uh, having read the first Foundation novel and hopefully uh, very soon the entire series. And, you know... To my knowledge, this book, along with the Foundation, is like the uh, second most seminal work of science fiction ever written, and it's probably mo second most influential. And that there is uh, Dune by Frank Herbert in this very wonderful copy here from the Penguin Galaxy uh, series which I did some research on this. Apparently, 
Originally, this was a part of a box set, but you could also buy these individually, which is interesting. It's a very nice hardback. And, uh, you know, there's the entire book there. We intend, my brother and I intend to read this soon as like a book club or something or other. So I'm not quite sure when uh, we'll get around to this, but we will eventually. So that's the first book there. And then um, we decided for this birthday, you know, to... I never really celebrate all that much because, to be honest, my birthday at this point uh, in my life, you know, uh, being a sort of a young adult is really just any other day for me. And I could really... I couldn't care less as to, you know, how you cele celebrate it or however. So anything is, is fine with me. I could, we could just stay home and just, you know, uh, not do anything. But instead, what we decided to do was we went up from where we live to uh, two hours north in Ventura, California, which is a uh, which was a yearly tradition for many years, uh, that my family had done, but we've stopped uh, about three or four years ago. But then, you know, just my myself, my mother and my brother decided to go up there. And what we did was we went up to Main Street and I perused all of the local bookshops. And here is my haul. So the first book I suppose I got was uh, from the Calico Cat Bookshop. This was actually a favourite of mine. Um, I have quite a bit of books that were from there. Um, I think my copy of Finnegan's Wake by James Joyce was from there. Um, I can't quite remember what else uh, was from there. But anyway, this one here is called Beach Masters by Thea Astley. Wouldn't you just look at that lovely cover? It's beautiful. Anyhow, um, this struck me because not only did the cover stick out to me, but uh, also apparently this book is about a, a revolution on an island in the South Pacific. And I suppose the secondary plot is a man trying to reconcile with the demons of his past or something or other so it might be an interesting read it's fairly short so uh david maloof um gave it a good review and as you know i i very much admire david maloof for his novel jono i thought that was excellent i have no idea why i've not read any any anything else by him but uh, i will eventually and uh anything that he seems to lionize uh, I suppose, is of merit. So, there's that. Okay. Uh, next here, as I mentioned, this was from Calico Cat. Uh, the next one here was from a place called Times Remembered. Now, originally, uh, when we would go there, I would uh, go and peruse the, uh, the aisles looking for vintage Star Wars figures you know, from the 70s and 80s made by Kenner and such. But uh, I found that, you know, a single figure, you know, it's like, yay big, uh, loose, is about $22. It's ridiculous. And so, so I uh, gradually, I stopped uh, buying them. In fact, uh, at that one shop, uh, hang on a minute, don't go nowhere. But at that one shop, I actually bought these two uh, figures, Rius, uh, from Return of the Jedi, uh, you've seen these guys before, I've, uh, I've done a review of these, and, uh, they've been in a few other videos of mine, so, yeah, I, I bought these there, uh, at the place, that's what I would usually buy, but as I grew older, and also I bought that Wily e. Coyote, uh, here, let me get it, yeah, I bought this thing here, at uh, that place, Times Remembered as well. Uh, you've seen this in a video um, that I've done many, many, many years ago. Not many years ago. 
Feels like I've been on here forever, but it's only been a couple years. Strange. Anyhow, uh, so I, I'd get stuff like that there. But uh, as I grew older and more mature and more financially scrupulous, I decided not to spend my money on frivolous uh, toys like this. So instead, I decided to check their book section. They had a few books there, a fair few books there, not too many. But out of all the books that they did have there, I did find one. And that is um, God Emperor of Dune uh, by Frank Herbert again. There's him with the beard back there. I actually just shaved off mine. Uh, not completely, but I, I've reduced it greatly. I haven't shaved since August uh, or July, one of those. So I've just taken it all off and... Uh, Pretty envious of old Frank there. Anyhow, I believe this is the fourth or fifth book in the Dune series. This is the only other one I found up there. I mean, the only one I found up there. I was looking for other ones, like uh, Children of the Dune, The Heretics of Dune, and what's it called? The Conspiracy Dune, or Counterpoint to Chapter House Dune. That's what it's called, Chapter House Dune. I was looking for all those. But I could only find this one, which is all right. You know, cost me two bucks, which was uh, fairly decent for an antique shop. Uh, uh, not sure if I mentioned it, but it was an antique shop, times remembered. But anyway, I got that. Uh, and then there was this little rookery, not rookery, but alley, um, in between the shops where, you know, they sell various uh, knickknacks and such and... Among those was a, a bunch of books. So, uh, I decided to get three of those. And what I got was uh, The Cossacks and the Raid by Leo Tolstoy. Uh, this is two of his novellas. Um, as you know, Leo Tolstoy is a classic author. He wrote War and Peace, of which I've read the first 100 pages. Uh, he wrote Anna Karenina. Uh, he wrote a few other things, too. But this is some of his shorter work, so I might get into that. It's in absolutely threadbare condition, so I might read this and then chuck it uh, once I've uh, once I've read it. But uh, yeah, there's that. Fifty cents, I believe that was, and I think this one here, Beach Hunters or Beach Masters, whatever it is, was uh, three. 350. And one thing also I forgot to mention about this, about Beach Masters, you can see they're signed by author. Look at that. I didn't even know it. Um, I took the thing up there to the lady uh, at the checkout and she said it's signed by the author. And I said, is it? And then she proceeded to show me this page here. And uh, yeah, apparently it is. So this might be worth some money. Probably not. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, 350 for that. But anyhow, uh, and then next, uh, st still in that same alleyway, I got uh, two of the Game of Thrones books, uh, A Storm of Swords and The Feast for Crows. Um, now I just need a dance with dragons, and then I would have completed the series. These are in absolutely fantastic condition. You can see there, there's, you know, no creases in the spine. All the pages are clean, everything. 50 cents each for these. It's unbelievable. I couldn't pass them up. Okay, and then uh, what I decided to do was I popped into a Goodwill. And, uh, you know, wasn't particularly looking for anything there. But, you know, might just see what was in there. And so, you know, ideally, I, my main uh, purpose for this whole excursion was to get some of the, the remaining Foundation novels that I had uh, to get in order to read the whole series. So... Uh, Instead of finding one of the Foundation novels, I actually found this beauty right here. The Reverberator by Henry James, a favorite author of mine. 
in this beautiful, this beautiful, absolutely beautiful uh, hardback edition from the 40s, I believe. You can see that there. If I remember properly, I think this was from 49. Uh, yeah, 49. This is just absolutely beautiful. It's got a fox on the cover. And yeah, as soon as I saw this, I just had to get it. Two dollars for this. Maybe less. I don't know. Uh, so I'll read that soon. And then uh, we went. I went to this one other place, actually. Yeah, this one other place um, called... What was it called? The Bank of Books. Yes, that's what it was called, The Bank of Books. And I got uh, a fair few books from there. Um, I was also, you know, trying mainly to look for science fiction, but I uh, was also looking for uh, a few other things there, too. Um... But uh, among the books, I found a few, th a few titles of interest, um, because Sequoia Seven had asked of this, had asked if I read it before on uh, my last stream. Uh, I decided to uh, to get it, and uh, that book is a High Wind in Jamaica by Richard Hughes. I believe. Well, this isn't necessarily a deal, but these were all five. Dollars. Well, I'll, I'll show you which was fine. They were originally in a uh, in a little packet, you know, to keep them preserved, I suppose. But anyhow, uh, Highwind in Jamaica by Richard Hughes. Um, I plan to read this soon. I believe it's about pirates. So that might be interesting. Oh, it should be noted that the original title for this was The Innocent Voyage. So... That's that. And then the other, another book I got from there. Um, this is another science fiction. Um, if you don't know, there's a booktuber on here called Todd the Librarian. Uh, I believe he's out of Kentucky somewhere. And, you know, he talks about this book all the time. Uh so much so to where it's become a joke on his channel. And really, uh, <laughs> when he does all these book tags, uh, he finds himself being slightly uh, disappointed at just how much, you know, this book comes up in it. You know, because he read it at an early age and had liked it enough to where it's, you know, it was impactful on him and it fits all the criteria of all these book tags. And that book is uh, Midworld by Alan Dean Foster. This, I believe, takes place on a jungle planet. And as you know, I like jungle settings, so this might be of interest to me. This was also $5. Not a tremendous deal, but uh, it's in very good condition, I must say. Oh, well, there's that. And then another $5 book that I found was something I've been looking for, not for ages, but for a considerable amount of time, uh, mainly because I saw an interview with this man. And the way he talks about cliches and how most art today is one or another form of courageous cliches just has me curious as to how he himself uh, goes about writing. And the writer in question is Frederick Raphael, and I uh, got his novel, The Glittering Prizes. That's him on the cover there. A very smart-looking fellow. Is this a penguin? I think this is the only penguin that, uh, I, that I got out of this thing. And... Uh, so I'll read this and see if he doesn't if he does or doesn't use any cliches. So we'll see. This was also five bucks. And then this one here, uh, you can already kind of see it. Um 
as you know, I'm a, <coughs> a pretty big fan of Robert and Davies' books. I've read most of them, and I, I have most of them. And, you know, I've read his Deptford trilogy and his Salterton trilogy, and there was another trilogy that he wrote called the Cornish Trilogy, of which I've only had one book, that being the Rebel Angels. Um, and so I had to get two others in that series. And so uh, this one here um, is the third in the uh, Cornish Trilogy, but still, uh, you know, it is part of it. And it's The Lyre of Orpheus in a nice hardback edition. Uh, two dollars. Two dollars. Would you believe that? Um, originally, I was going to get the paperback because it was cheaper. Uh, I did see another hardback of this book. And uh, it was about nine dollars or something like that. And I wasn't going to pay that much for that. But then the uh, uh, the shopkeeper had... Hang on a minute. Sorry, the phone was ringing. Uh, but then the shopkeeper, you know, had noticed my folly, and it actually presented me with this one. This uh, copy, which was only two bucks. And uh, it's beautiful. It really is. And this is the third uh, volume in the series. So that's nice. Very. I'm looking very much... I'm very much looking forward to reading this, along with the rest of the corn Trilogy. Okay, and then the last place I went to um, up there was called... I forget the name of this place, but it was a used and new bookshop. It was almost... Hang on a sec. Uh, sorry about that. My mother had just uh, walked in to let me know that she would be out of the house for a little bit, so that's why... Uh, Pardon the abrupt pause there. Anyhow, uh, this bookshop, imagine if it were a Barnes & Noble, but a hundred times better. Um, most of their stock was actually used books. I saw, you know, uh, there was used books with a fair few of uh, new ones. And, uh, you know, it was a, a very nice location. And uh, because I had been, you know, searching all day for, you know, books and such... It was also a very calming setting, because uh, in there they had played uh, some variations of classical music. For for instance, uh, Canon and D minor, um, and it just really did uh, calm me down tremendously. And you know, I just took my time to search there, and uh, I found only four books, but four. Very desirable books. So, obviously, uh, because I was on such a big science fiction kick, I immediately went to their science fiction section. And they had a very small science fiction section. Only two shelves for science fiction and fantasy. And so, you know, I just decided to look there and see if I could find anything. Lo and behold, I actually did find something. Uh, and you saw this in the previous video that I just uploaded, maybe. And as soon as I saw this, I squealed very audibly, like Dennis Nedry in Jurassic Park. And uh, it is one of the Foundation books. And that is Prelude to Foundation. I, How much was this? Only $3. But uh, the fact that I found this alone made the trip for me. It really did. I, I really, you know, this is the only foundation book I found up there. And I was just so satisfied to get this. I really was. Even though it's in kind of not the best shape, uh, you know, it's still, uh, still readable. And there's uh, Mr. Asimov on the back there. Anyhow, so I got that, and then also, as another science fiction book, I got a Jules Verne that I didn't already have, Master of the World. I have no idea what this one was about, but I saw Jules Verne. His stuff is extremely hard to come by, unless it's 
20,000 leagues under the sea or journey to the center of the earth or something like that. So I got that. It's a bit water damaged, but it's all right. And then to go along with uh, the Lyre of Orpheus, I got to, to complete the uh, Cornish trilogy. I got the second book in there, What's Bred in the Bone, by Robertson Davies, this time in paperback. It's because it's the only one they had there. And then that was 450 It's not too... It wasn't too expensive, but still, I completed the series, and, you know, it's my birthday. I, I, I can splurge if I'd like. You know, so there's that. Apparently, this new phone of mine can only record videos that are about 25 minutes long. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I will have to do some experimentation in that department. So do forgive me. This is a little add on there. Uh, I'd have to I had to cut that in a couple parts and, you know, uh, stop uh, abruptly. Anyhow, so now this one, uh, this next book after the uh, What's Bread in the Bone, was a complete and utter shock to me. I do collect this author. I've been collecting this author for a number of years. I've been trying to find a lot of his books. They are exceedingly difficult to find in this horrid state of California. In fact, uh, you know, even when I went out to Arizona a couple of times, I only ever found one. And I bought it up. And the others I just had to find online. And, you know, I only found one other out here in a local bookshop that's since closed down. But I found one here at uh, whatever this place was called, the uh, used Barnes & Noble, whatever it is. And... Uh, if you must know, the author is Edgar Wallace, and I've talked about Edgar Wallace before. Uh, he is a, he was, uh, he's dead now, a prolific mystery writer. Um, he's probably most famous now for having contributed greatly to the script for King Kong, but he was uh, a very prolific mystery writer, and I found one of his books there, that being The Four Just Men. I do have The Lore of the Four Just Men, which I believe is one of the sequels. So I couldn't read that. So I found this. And this was also... Oh, God. That... Did I really spend that much? $5.50. Anyway, either way. A tremendous find this was. Uh, I was surprised. You know, there's still... If you look hard enough, you'll be able to find these, you know, these gems, these Edgar Wallaces, or these, uh, you know, Robert Van Gulick's, or uh, any other um, uh, writer uh, gone by of, uh, of uh, repute, you know, that's since uh, been cast and uh, fallen into obscurity. Uh, you know, they're still out there. And so that's very comforting. So, anyhow, uh, for Jeff's men. And so that marks the end of the books that I got up in Ventura. Um, I do have actually a few more. And I will go ahead and show you those now. Um, I guess I will show you uh, these first. So my brother, along with uh, getting me uh, that rather beautiful copy of Dune, uh, had decided uh, to get me these books here. Now, I had been interested in reading these for many years and have just now got around to uh, actually, you know, getting physical copies of them. But uh, if you must know, uh, these are actually uh, Star Wars Expanded Universe novels. Yes, I said Expanded Universe, not Legends! Take that label off. Seriously. Sick and tired of seeing that. It's expanded universe. This stuff happened, so far as I'm concerned. All of your nonsensical drivel that you've just spewed out at a moment's notice, Disney... 
That's rubbish. Only good for the dustbin. But anyhow, uh, that little rant aside, uh, he did get me uh, uh, these, uh, the Thrawn Trilogy by uh, Timothy Zahn, which is, uh, and these are worse for wear, but these are uh, reading copies, so it doesn't matter. I may upgrade them soon enough, but, uh, you know, these are reading copies of uh, Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and uh, The Last Command. Otherwise known as episodes 7, 8, and 9 of Star Wars. The real episode 7, 8, and 9 of Star Wars. The, the only episode 7, 8, and 9 of Star Wars. The definitive episode 7, 8, and 9 of Star Wars. Anyhow, uh, but yes, um, I have read the first one, Heir to the Empire, and... Uh, I must say, this is probably the most fun I've had reading a book in a long time. I read it in about uh, six, five or six days, this almost 400-page book. It was, uh, and let me tell you, I believed every word of it. I believe that all this stuff happened to uh, all your favorite characters all these years after Return of the Jedi. I do believe it. Uh, and I don't uh, take any of the stuff that Disney has done as fact. In fact, I re I've repudiated it. I've only seen the Disney Star Wars movies once. One time for each movie. And that is probably the only, the, the most amount of time, the absolute limit. That's about the maximum that you need to see those. Well, actually, it would be zero. But, uh, Oh my god, those are just so horrible. I just... I blocked them out of my memory. I don't even remember the plots behind them. Just so awful. But uh, anyway, I've read the first one, Heir to the Empire. I'm going to be reading the second one, Dark Force Rising, once my brother finishes this one, because we are doing a book club on it. Uh, and uh, The whole series, that is. And he's still working his way through this. He needs another week on it. I, I, and also, I figured I may as well say, I thought this was funny here. There's the author, Timothy Zahn, <laughs> looking very cheeky there. He's like, and he's probably saying to himself, I wrote better Star Wars than Disney ever could have. <laughs> you know? Uh, and it's true. He did. He, he very much did. And I very much anticipate uh, um, this, the, the next two volumes in the series. So I got those. And then, finally, uh, I had to buy these online because I could not, for the life of me, find them in any bookshop whatsoever. I Either in my... I checked every bookshop, not every bookshop, but bookshops in my area, in San Diego, and also in Ventura. Could not find, could not find these two books anywhere in those locations at all so i decided to just bite the bullet as they say spend a, just a, a wee bit extra money and uh, get these two books uh so that i may be able to complete the series and if you've seen my uh the video i did before this one the last one uh obviously you know what these books are so first book here is uh foundation and earth by Isaac Asimov. Um, bought this on eBay uh, for, I think, four bucks, and uh, it's a hardback, which is very nice. There's what it looks like without the cover. This is, I believe, the sixth book in the series. And so I got that, and then finally, uh, Obviously, you know, that whole video that I just did before this was all about it. Uh, you know which novel this is. This is obviously the final Foundation novel in the series, Forward, The Foundation. And that completes the series. I just got this today, as I said, 
and I'm just elated that I have all the, the foundation books. Anyhow, uh, that was this little book haul. Actually, a very, very large, extensive, and expensive. Well, I don't know, not too expensive, but uh, a very large, substantial book haul for a little bit from Christmas, but also mainly from my birthday. Uh, and oddly enough, even though I did buy a whole bunch of books, these all fit on the shelves. Somehow I was able to fit all of these on every single shelf that I do have. You know, all these shelves there. Uh, obviously that one's still down. I still need to put that one up somehow. But yes, I was able to fit them all on all those shelves there. Even those ones there. Anyhow, uh, so I was very happy about that. I was actually worried that I wasn't going to be able to uh, to fit them, but alas, I was. Uh, so anyhow, that was uh, this little book haul. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was quite a long one. Uh, I hope that this will uh, compress well in uh, my editing software. If not, then I'm not too sure. We'll see what happens. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this little book haul of mine, and uh, uh, I guess I'll put these in there too. Uh, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do next for videos. I'm probably going to keep uploading stuff from my backlog because, to be fair, those need to be uploaded. They've been on my old phone for far too long, and even though I don't use it anymore, they still need to be off there. And, as I said, I keep saying this, I'm going to say it over and over again, probably uh, up until the point that I do, in fact, initiate this, but I don't plan to do this very much longer. Um, as soon as I do the library tour, whenever that might be, I have no idea when that's going to be. Hopefully, once I can get that shelf up, and once I don't buy so many books, uh, it should be soon. Maybe. But once I do that, and once I get all of these videos that I do have on my back, because I have about 30 of them. I have 30. Well, not exactly 30, but quite a bit. I have a lot. And then, you know, I have to... I did... Most of these videos were just my self-recording audio that I have to overlay over pictures. So that will take some time. But once I get all these videos out, I'm probably not going to do much else other than that. So I'm not really sure what to, uh, what more to say on the matter than that. Anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoyed this book haul. And uh, not sure what video I'm going to be doing next. It might, it, like I said, it will possibly be, and his neck is very stiff, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it'll possibly be just something else from the backlog, unless I feel inspired to do something else. Anyhow, that's it, and uh, you all have yourselves a good morning, afternoon, evening, midnight, whenever you plan on seeing this video and whenever this thing is uploaded, because this is going to take a bloody long time to compress and to upload, so who knows when you're going to be seeing this. And I wish you all very well and i just hope you will just see it i suppose we'll see you in the next one cheers